So let's start creating our menu here in the Volante back office. Now, it's a good idea to have a template created, do something in a document to outline the menu you want to set up ahead of time. The way we build out our divisions, our groups, our categories, as well as our items impacts how our items are reported on in the reporting section of the back office. So of course, we want to create things in the most logical way that we can. So it is a good idea to sit down ahead of time and do some thinking about how you want your menu to come together. So what we'll do is we'll start with our menu setup area. And we're going to come into a blank template in this back office. Nothing's been created yet. And like we saw in previous videos, each of our tab areas controls a different section of our menu setup, but we're going to start here today in our menu item area. So right now, of course, we have nothing created. I'm going to right click on menu and choose to add a division. So this will be the name of this particular menu set or grouping. So in some cases, it could be the name of your menu. It could be the name of your business. It could be that you have multiple things happening at your location. So we could have a menu for our restaurant, a menu for a cafe, a menu for a salon, a menu for a Starbucks, and so on. So all I've done right now is I've right-clicked and chose to create a new division. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a name. And, and today, we'll just call it Allison Cafe. OK, so I've created my division. And I don't have to save yet. I can go through and create a number of different components within my back office before saving. So now I'm going to go ahead and right click and choose to add a group. So in this case, I'll add a group called beverages. And I'm going to add another group and I'll add a group called barcode items. So this may be somewhere I want to keep some items that are easily scannable and, you know, somewhere I want to keep my things well organized. So I'll go ahead and create a couple more groups. I'll create one for um, options. And I'll create one for combos. And we'll take a look at these in a uh, future video as well. So I've got my beverages. We're going to work in this one for the moment. I'm going to right click and add a category. And I'm going to say hot beverages. And I'm going to right click again and choose to add a category. And I'm going to call it cold beverages. And under my barcode items, I'll do the same thing. I'm going to create a category. And I'm going to call it um, soda. So I've created my division, my groups, and my categories, which I'm going to continue to build out through future sessions. But I'm going to go ahead now and create an item. So under my soda, I'm going to right click and choose to add a menu item. My screen is going to change here to reflect the menu item, uh, menu item setup page, sorry. <laughs> and I can start adding in my names and things like that. So if I don't want to have a different kitchen name, if I don't want a different alternate name, I don't have to fill any of those in. I can strictly fill in the standard menu item name. And once it's saved, it will auto-populate the rest of the fields, including a PLU number and external reference ID. So down the road, if I don't need to have this in any other um, numbering system, I'll just let it default to whatever it puts in for me. The menu item name is how this item appears in the back office, display name being how it appears in the cashier's screen on the buttons. The alternate name is something we would put in in another language. So if we're going to dual language our system and have maybe English Spanish or English French, then what we would end up doing is putting the alternate language name in that space. The last thing is our kitchen name, and that's how it would print out of a kitchen printer, not the customer's receipt. So a little bit of a different setup if needed. Yep, so I'm going to go ahead and put my item in. So I'll go ahead and put in my white rock seltzer lime. I'm not going to fill anything else in. At this point, I can also put in a price for my item. Now, if no taxes are set up in your system, you will see blanks in these places. So we will come back and explore this later on about how we can do assignments with taxes, as well as um, printer type assignments which have to do with where the routing for this item will go to a kitchen printer. It does not have anything to do with the customer's receipt. I'm going to go ahead and give this a price, call it $1.99. Everything else is filled in here. And we can hop down to the advanced tab. And we're going to explore the options that happen in this page in a future video as well, because we do have things in here that control how the item behaves. So whether it's an option, a combo, if it's going to prompt us for sizing or open items, which again, are, are very useful, especially during our um, go live period. I'm going to hop on down to miscellaneous here because I do want to add a barcode for this item. So under scan codes, I've got a section down here where I can add in barcodes. So I'm going to right click down here and I can either add a new scan code or generate a UPC code. 
So I'm, if I'm choosing to add a new scan code, I'll be using the barcode as it appears on the label for whichever product I'm putting into the system. If I choose to generate a UPC code, this place is where I would be having it create its own barcode for me so that I could print it and put it on my own custom products. So things like in-house sandwiches or salads or other things you might be selling in a little poly pack, let's say, that you have created on your own. So we do have a way of generating UPCs and um, sticker sheets that we'll explore uh, down the road as well. In this event, I'm gonna go ahead and choose to add a new scan code. We see this double click to edit field has appeared. So I'll go ahead and double click on it to edit. I can type in the 12 digit barcode found on this product. So that'll be the five digits to the left, five digits to the right under the lines of the barcode, as well as the far side leading number and far side trailing numbers to the far left and right sides. I can also scan it in if I have a barcode scanner ha uh, handy plugged into my system. Go ahead and put that in. Now, as we can see, it did go in with the percent and question mark. That is a standard type of setting that happens on a barcode scanner generally. At the POS level, those numbers get stripped off, but unfortunately at the um, computer I'm working on and the configuration on the actual symbol scanner I'm using, these numbers are held. Simply double click in there and you can go in and edit them out. Because I'm editing a field in here, I do need to hit the enter key. If I click away from it, my change won't be accepted. So I've gone ahead now, we've created an item. I've added a scan code to this item, and now we'd be ready to go and do a data sync and send this item down to our terminal so that they'd be ready to start using this item. I'll go ahead and choose save all. So I, again, I'm gonna save everything. Everything that's green will turn into a standard dark text here, which means now my save has been accepted and written into my database.